Hello, sweetie. Welcome to the Stanley Parable demonstration. Um, I got to the end of the year. I'm going to waffle for a bit. Uh, and honestly, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen and played a, a variety of things, and I sort of, I've done a few little individual showcases of other things and oddness that I've looked at, and this. Uh, I got to the end of the year. I got three episodes left. Like I just, I just, just did whatever I could. I filled in the gap between the end of one series and the beginning of the Halloween little nightmares thing. And now I'm coming up to the end of the year. I got three episodes left, and I figured I wanted to show off the new Stanley Parable, but it was money. And I thought either something has to be very little money, or something I already own, and I have loads of games. So I thought, why not show off a few I already have? Just like not like a full game, not like a, a huge playthrough. But if there are stuff, there is stuff here you want me to revisit or do more on, gladly. Um, but the Stanley Parable has had two versions. It came out as a Stanley Parable, just regular thing. It was also like a mod before that. I don't really know much about that. Um, before the original release, they released this demo. Which is meant to be as a demo, it demonstrates what the game is going to be like. I'm going to say nothing, but I will show you the demo and I'll show you the game because they're different. <laughs> and it's quite weird. Um, and then they did, they did sort of remade it and re released it, which was the version I was looking at, at getting and playing called the Ultra Deluxe version. But I figured on the computer, I already have the original version, so and the demo, so I could make one video out of that, maybe two, might just be a really long one. It's not a very long game, the demo is not long either, but I thought you might enjoy it, so here we go. So a demo, yeah, as I said before, demo is something you would play that gives you a representation of what it's like to play the final product. This does that, but it's so very different. So it's a first-person perspective. It's going to seem weird. Bear with me. Oh, here we go. The Stanley Parable Day demonstration is this way. It's a very specific sense of humor. And I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the Stanley Parable Demonstration. Your number is 28. When your number is displayed, please enter the demonstration room. Thank you, and have a pleasant demonstration. Thank you. Right. Uh, warning. Do not stand on this side of fence. Oh. Oh, I can't get behind it. Well, that's... That's disconcerting. Uh, waiting room. Please wait for your number and then enter. Thank you. Now, the number's ticking down. It's ticking down reasonably quickly. But I kind of want to just jump again. <laughs> now we'll go back. It's um. There are rooms with big white voids. There's a magazine about ducks. What's that? Everything's okay. I can't crouch. Can I crouch? Oh, I can crouch. Everything's everything's okay. Uh, okay. The mugs have the Stanley Parable demo on them. Very low texture. I feel like if I did the uh, if I adjusted the graphic settings, it would. Affect the recording. Should we try it anyway? Oh, it's gone past our number. Oh, well. So yeah, as you can see, the window's open onto a white void. Nothing much out there. Um, famous demos. So I know one of these, at least. So that one is Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, Sons of Liberty. I think this one's Gunpoint. Possibly. Which I've played briefly. That one... That one looks like Red Faction or Half Life. Something to that effect, and I don't know what that is. 
No idea. Nice wallpaper there. Uh, we got some books that look like one block. I mean, this game is old ish. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Stanley Parable live demonstration. It will be my pleasure to guide you through this sneak peek at what to expect in the Stanley Parable. A tease. Just enough to leave you hungry for more. How exciting. Can't you just feel that nervous tension? The looming uncertainty? Why don't we drink in the anticipation for a moment, just for 20 minutes or so? Please, for just 20 minutes, don't move or act in any way. Simply remain motionless and let the thrill of demoing the Stanley Parable wash over you. Alright then, I'll remain motionless. Also, worth noting uh, that the sound on my headphones keeps cutting in now. If that's the same on the recording, I apologise. Especially seeing as this game is big on narration. Oh wait, I've got it. You know what would really ramp up the anticipation? If I gave you a little tour of the facility and show you how we make video game demonstrations. Yes, you'll be simply out of your mind with anxiety. Come along this way. That's better than setting for 20 minutes. This I is where I and the do. other proctors have been working meticulously to construct a demo that explains clearly and concisely exactly what the Stanley Parable is, how it plays, and why you should spend real-world money on the main game. Video game demonstrations are tricky, and without the proper technology, you run the risk of the player having no idea what to expect in the full version. They have a point. Ah, here is one such technology. These buttons are meant to convey the meaning of choice and the impact of the decisions you make. After all, choices carry tremendous meaning and consequence. Didn't you know that? Go ahead. Why don't you try picking one of these buttons to press and we'll see what your choice says about you. Now, I tested this the other day and I picked a very specific button. And I kind of want to see if I pick a slightly different one that still says the same thing. So... How fascinating. Did you know that 94% of all people who select that particular button are sexual predators? <laughs> you see, our choices really do illuminate the very intangible nature of our minds and souls. Pervert. Yeah, the other day I picked the bottom right one here and it said the same thing, so okay, I get it. Okay, what else can I show you then? This place is the buffalo of game design. Nothing is wasted. Okay. So this is the room we were in before, from the bottom. Should we start from the right or the left? I feel like we should start from the left. Wall technology. Now I think you'll find this exciting. We've actually developed a wall that you can walk through. Go ahead, give it a shot. I feel like this is a trick. Oh, hmm, guess it's still in development. Right, okay, moving along. <laughs> So they've built a wall. It's nice to How's know. the anticipation? Still feeling it? Notice. Important rules for properly administering demonstrations. Get right to the gameplay. Get right to gameplay. Give a brief summary of the game's plot rather than the full explanation. Hint at the first boss, but don't give away exactly who it is yet. Make all cutscenes skippable. Demo should last exactly eight minutes. Player should not be confused. Art. Yes. <laughs> final. I'm not going to go in there. That's his final choice. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go right. I'm going to go the other way around. Because I completely abandoned my idea. This device tells you whether or not you're inside a video game demonstration. Somewhere around here, there's also a device that tells you whether or not you're inside a device that tells you whether or not you're inside a video game demonstration. Hmm. Alrighty then. No danger, nothing in this room will kill you. That's reassuring. Uh, okay. Uh, compliments. One of the most important parts of administering any demonstration is pumping up your ego and appealing to insecurities about your sense of self-worth. That's why we use this room to develop cheap compliments to shower on the player during the demo. 
Go ahead and press that button to see some of the superficial flattery we've been cooking up. My heavens, I've never met someone who can consume as much uranium in a single sitting as you can. Just look at you go. Uh. Of all the people I know who are playing this exact demo at this exact moment and standing in this exact room, your performance is easily in the top 5,000. Top 4,700 even. I won't go as far as 4,600. Ah, oh, that's reassuring. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is embarrassing. I really can't think of anything else to say. Uh, no, no. You've really exhausted my list of compliments. Goodness, that was fast. Either you or this department has a lot of room for improvement. Okay then, what's next? Well, that feels mean, but all right. He did say all oh, this department, so. Hmm. Can't really worth stick and say. What's down here? Isolation chamber. How will I isolate myself if I can't get to the isolation chamber? Emotional booths. Now here's Emotional what booths. we use to convey story. These booths convert text from Happiness. a story into raw emotion. Go ahead, Courage. step into one of them and feel the sheer power of narrative exposition. Now, now, we have to save at least a few emotions for the full game. Discovery. It was though, and within, the shame he carried that ocean breeze did drift. The fierceness of the tides, the inevitable collapse of their kingdoms, washed ashore, bereft of shame, martyrs devoid of a cause, ripping and tearing at the eternal seams. A vessel without a captain, carrying itself like plastic in the wind, hinting at a purpose that was truer in some distant memory, if only it could decipher through time's veneer whose memory it wanted to be. Ah. Oh. I felt like that was a quote from something. What? I don't know. What emotion's that? That was discovery, it was his despair. Where did these cliffs go? These crags that we stood upon, it's they shielded good. us from our own ignorance. Spoke coddling words and wrapped our vulnerabilities in a woolen cloth that so many times I tried to set aflame. If I knew these comforts now, would their fibers be any more sensitive to the heat of my touch? Perhaps it was the cold I desired most of all. That empress to whom my flesh was always invisible. A hammock for the bones waiting to be touched and to be known. French. French is considered despair. Okay. Confusion. And embarrassment. Also, I do feel like I could slip under here. I did not see this the last time I went through. Secret. Oh. If I just walk off there, I can leave. Oh. <laughs> uh, waiting room. Oh, it's the waiting room from before. Uh, emotion booth. Yeah, I didn't know that was there. I've played this demo previously. Um, like many, many years ago, and I didn't know that was there. Oh, that's fear. Well, that's amazing. 
the time I had said that, Ooh. I just don't know. You went in both booths? Oh, how vulnerable of you. If at any point during the demo you need to cry, just let me know and we can take a minute. Oh, that one's out of order up there. I kind of feel like I want to try and get to it there. Is that bad? The game probably won't let me, because the final choice is the only one left. Okay, let's... You'll know if I've... Uh... No, no, we've already seen this room. If it saves you the trouble of pushing another button, I can assure you that you're still a pervert. <laughs> Thanks. This door cannot be opened because it's where you just came from. It's in the past. The Stanley Parable's official stance on the past is that it no longer exists and should be ignored. If the past attempts to speak to you, you may refer it to a Stanley Parable associate. Anyway, well, let me press another button. Fine. Guess I'll go this way. I can't jump. Paint pot there. No. That's the exit. And there you have it. Everything you need oh. to know about how video game demos are made. I missed a bit. Did you miss something? Don't yeah. worry. I'm sure we'll see it soon in the demo. Did you miss something? Don't worry. Oh, I'm sure we'll see it soon in the demo. It's going to close, isn't it? Yeah, you absolute git. It's going to be a loop. However, it's still important that we address safety concerns. Please closely observe the following possible negative side effects of playing the Stanley Parable. If you agree to be held 100% responsible Being for any and all injury or long-term damage, mental, physical or otherwise, that may occur while playing the demo, please do not Press the large red glowing disagree button at this time. Nothing? No objections? You're quite sure about that? Oh, well, all right then. In the event that you do experience one or all of the previously listed symptoms, let's establish a signal for you to convey to me that you wish the demonstration to be terminated. Please step into the dance perimeter. Please perform a dance. <laughs> Your dance has been recorded. In the event that you feel confused or disoriented by anything you see inside the demo, perform that dance and I will terminate the demo immediately. Right. All preparations have been made. It is time at last. Are you prepared for the Stanley Parable? Side. It's very disconcerting. But we're in the white void, it would seem. Oh, wait, what? What are we doing Welcome here? Welcome to Did the we Stanley not... Parable demonstration. Your number is 29. When your number is displayed, please enter the demonstration room. <laughs> Thank you, and have a pleasant demonstration. Uh, okay. Well, that's a bit trippy. Okay, uh, I'm lost. Let's just get back to the green room and start the demo again. I must have done something wrong the first time. Can I? No, the doors are there. Urgh. Okay, here we go. The Stanley Parable demo take two. Finding the demo, learning exactly what the Stanley Parable is, here it comes. Don't want to let me around. Okay. Oh, wait, what's this? Eight. Okay. Can I not leave? 
No. These are just boxes on bits of board. Eight. Eight. Wait, 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 wait. It's this is all wrong. This isn't the Stanley Parable. This is a game where you press a button and it says eight. Eight. Not only is the Stanley eight. Parable not a game about eight. continuously pressing the number eight, I can guarantee that this button eight. does not appear anywhere in the main game. Why is it here instead of the demo for the Stanley Parable? Where did the demo go? There was an actual demo here before. Something eight. has gone wrong. It's all gone horribly eight. wrong. We need to get you out of here before you start eight. forming impressions of the Stanley Parable based on whatever the hell this eight game is. Eight. We need to get out. We need to start eight. over. You mustn't stay here eight. another minute. Out, eight. out, out. Go, eight. go, go. Imagine okay. if this had been the demo. What would you have been thinking? You'd have left with no idea what the Stanley Parable is about. None whatsoever. I'm sorry, it, this game plays itself. It really is just ridiculous. Don't like the door shut behind me. I'm nervous, mate. 37. Oh. Welcome to the yes, Stanley yes, Parable yes, demonstration. Time. Your number is 30. When your number is Closing the doors behind me. Makes it. Okay, now let's take a minute to get something straight here. When you sit down to play this demo, you are assuming an amount of responsibility for its outcome. Now, <laughs> I can't say for certain whether you caused us to encounter the eight game rather than the Stanley Parable, but I think it's a pretty safe assumption that you had something to do with it. At this time, please take a minute to think about all of the mistakes you've made in playing this demonstration as well as your lack of respect for demo taking in general. <laughs> Wonderful. I could really feel the introspection on my end. Now that we're all on the same page again, I feel ready to attempt the demonstration once more. In this third attempt, we shall truly come to understand the meaning of the Stanley Parable. Let the demonstration begin. Let it. Oh. What? No, 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 it can't be over yet. You didn't see anything. Everything that was supposed to demonstrate why the Stanley Parable is a quality experience worth your time and money. It was here somewhere, I'm sure of it. Oh, no, 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 no. We have to get out of here. We have to find something for you to do, anything. The demo cannot end like this. Now, uh, hurry, hurry, this way. Okay, okay. I do enjoy that. The end. Thanks for playing the official demo of the Stanley Parable. Okay, yes. This is new. This is different. Surely there must be a game somewhere in here. Okay, okay. Oh, how about this cup? Yes, go pick up the cup. All right, now put it, um, um, in the bin. Now, what does the magazine say? Indoors. And ducks again. Let's just pop it over here. Is it the only thing I can pick up? It's the only thing I've been able to pick up so far. Go on then. Alright, we'll put it in the bin. You did it! You won! You know what you get for winning? An achievement. Wow, the Thank Stanley you. Parable just keeps <laughs> getting better and better. In fact, let me take a little survey of your experience. Based on what you've played so far, would you purchase the Stanley Parable? You responded, What a clear and straightforward demonstration of the merits of the Stanley Parable. I am convinced of the quality of the full game. Incredible. You really do get it. You understand. Oh, I was so worried. <laughs> I just wanted you to know what I see in the Stanley Parable. What I think makes it, well, special. It's Here so very difficult to put into words. 
Oh, we're all beyond that now, aren't we? <laughs> Come along. Let's get to the end and the final choice. Okay. I thought we'd done the final choice. I forgot. To, ending, uh, ending. Where are you? Where are you? Okay. <laughs> Big red disagree button there, roundabout. Huh? Is this it? Uh yes! <laughs> the end. Now, this is where we want the demo to be over. And I think it's time for you to log your final decision as to whether or not the Stanley Parable is any good. And it all comes to this. Please consider very carefully before answering. Much is at stake. I did ignore this earlier. This is what I was going to come back for. It's going to come round again and play another. I'm going to walk through here. This gate's going to shut behind me, isn't it? Do you like the Stanley Parable? Now, do we answer honestly, or do we press yes? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm a bit sort of yes. Is it working? I. No. Are you sure? You sure you press the button? <laughs> what? No. We we finished the demo. Did it start again? Hello. Is anyone there? They already finished. They said they liked it. I need someone to stop the demo. Hello? We need to go back. We need to get out of here. No, let's not. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm confused. I swear I played this, but I don't remember getting this far. Oh, I think I broke it. Oh no, what's going on? Where is everyone? Okay, over to the left, down this way. I was wondering to tell me it was a second furloughed again. Oh, it's the isolation chamber. Hello. <laughs> oh, nice and quiet, finally. Well, I suppose we can both agree that I failed, haven't I? My job was to be a teacher, and I so badly wanted to teach you exactly what the Stanley Parable is supposed to be, but but somehow I couldn't. I, uh, well, at any rate, I don't know if I care for the Stanley Parable anymore. Do you think any of this is actually in the main game? Honestly, I doubt it. What would that even look like? No, I think I've had enough of it. No more doors, no more demonstrations. No more endings. That's the other problem with this game. There's too many bloody endings. I'm sick of them. How can one game end so many times? It doesn't make sense. Oh, but back at the beginning of the demonstration, now oh, that was lovely. No concerns about where it was all going. No confusion. Just a blank slate. Yes, that's what I want. A game of beginnings. Hey. <laughs> Do you remember? Just a few minutes ago when we met for the first time, and I showed you the technology used to make the demo, because I thought there actually was a demo. <laughs> oh, we were so naive back then, how little we knew of the world. And then when we ended up back in the waiting room, even though you'd already done that before, yes, it's all so fresh in my memory. They were such wonderful moments. <gasps> And then when we played the game with the cup and you won, and then we kept wandering and we ended up in a stairwell somewhere and we just kept climbing and climbing, flight after flight after flight. I thought they would never end. And then we were on some kind of catwalk. I didn't have any idea what was down there. Did you? And we just kept going and we found that elevator and it said escape on it. And we talked about it for a while about how we couldn't possibly know whether this was really an escape, but that it seemed worth a try, and at the very least it would be an adventure. So we got inside, and we rode the elevator up and up and up, and we had some sense that the end was coming, but we couldn't possibly know when, and then after so long it finally stopped, and we stepped out into the lush outdoors, the trees, the wildlife, the sun rising on a new and glorious path. Freedom. We were free. There was nothing to think, nothing to know. Simply us. 
being right there in that moment. Wasn't it so beautiful? Wasn't that moment so singularly, piercingly beautiful? We were free. Okay. <laughs> yes. The Stanley Parable is out now. Available on Steam. <laughs> it would seem. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I don't... Uh, I don't recall that uh, that demo being quite that like that, but uh, oh, yeah, you can oh look at me, he mouse. Um, yeah, that was just the demo. I hope uh, it's funny because <laughs> the the fact that he comments that there's no demo is possibly the best demo of the game I could think of. Now. To see if I can actually get the game to load. Uh, hello again, sweetie. Welcome to the Stanley Parable. Uh, let me get rid of the mouse cursor. Um, yeah, here's the actual Stanley Parable. Um, and as you can see, when I move up and down, it appears on the little screen there, <laughs> on the uh, on the desk. So as you go with the last game, it is very very weird and very meta. Uh, with the demo, so here we go. Here's a Stanley Parable. <laughs> the end is never the end is never the end is loading. <laughs> the end is loading. Loading, loading, loading. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Righto. Some story. Righto. So I can step out of the office. Boy 427. He's, uh, stop being given things to do. So I'm going to play this game. Um, I'm going to follow what the narrator says, if that's all right. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. There's that white void again. I've never worked in like a proper office, but I'm assuming there's some vibes here that are... Very on point. 
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> I love this. Do not alter <laughs> without consulting the whiteboard manager. Uh, what have we got? Targets. Wish a funny idea in your coffee machine. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Standardize graphs for XY. 40 XY. Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper. Synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? Keep the targets on the topic of. Ah. Future was yesterday, tomorrow is now. Tomorrow. Complete today's unfinished agenda items. Right, next day's agenda. Reflect. And Jim. <laughs> I got numbers and Jim. Uh, graphs, I can't get close enough to read some of those. So, oh, that's what I can do. Solving interpersonal conflict. If you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee like yourself. Oh, that's a bold spell. Oh, I can. <laughs> okay. It seems like normal office bullshit. Well, I got whoever it was out of the broom closet anyway. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Right there. No. No? Okay. Dun 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 Don't worry. Things have become clear. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. I do love that. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Oh, I talked to him. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. I've got 54 on here. Incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer oh. luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Uh, okay, I want to go that way. Trust me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do as I'm told. The 
The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Oh. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I mean, sure. It seems weird. Let's have a look. Oh, there's another button. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Hmm. I didn't hear what that said. The sound was cutting out. I think it happens on the recording too. It's very weird. I don't know why it does it. It's eerie though, isn't it? Hmm. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Probably. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Uh, yeah, I kind of feel like that's not what I meant to press. I'm going to go into the facility power. This is so against what I'd normally do. I'd normally be defying for the sake of defying. But I'm going to listen. And I'm going to do. And then we can see what happens when you do something completely different. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. 
Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. There we are. That's one way to play the game. The entire point of the game is there are many ways to play the game. So that was just one playthrough. Um, <laughs> doing as I'm told. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. Now, I feel like I can make it out of the window. buttons on the control actually do much. I feel like I picked up something and I was able, able to get out the window. I feel like I've done that before. Computers. Not sure what that's about. Why do I feel like I can get out the window? Oh, my door's shut. Yeah, now now I'm just going to dick around uh, and probably defy as much as possible. reasons of solidly just doing the opposite. Oh no. Oh, I can't get back. Stanley clicked on literally every single door in the office because he doesn't pick up well on cues from his environment. <laughs> oh, now the sound's being really weird again. Basically commenting on me opening every single door. later. I do feel like you can jump out the window. I'd done it before. <laughs> the last time I played this was 10 years ago. Literally, when I booted up the game, it said the last time you played this is like May 20. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Right, so it says I opened the, entered the door on the left. No, I'm not. 
Bye. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, I don't think any of these doors open. No. Don't know why I'm trying them all. Ooh. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yeah, he did. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Caution, do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> the fact that the narrator gets increasingly annoyed with me. Oh dear. Uh, da, 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 da. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift $1,000. Penalty for jumping off of cargo lift. Five thousand dollars. Jump from the car lift. Once imaginable cause death. I mean. But in his eagerness to prove <laughs> that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, <laughs> Stanley left from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Yeah. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. How could I not? I mean How could I not? I'm so sorry. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go myself. to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes, this room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Okay. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make... What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Danger. Danger everywhere. To be one. To be one, to be two. To be you. 2B3? No, 2B2. Sound is cutting in and out. I need to stop doing that sound. Why do not stand on this other fence? I still love that. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. See, some of these doors got swipe cards. Where am I going to find a swipe card? Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. Yeah, uh, I, I understood perfectly. Sorry. I still don't think we're communicating properly. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Defiance. 
You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. <laughs> go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Ceiling light. Methods. No, I go for the door on the left. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Three. Oh, of course. A three. Really. <laughs> Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual opinion, you know? Any level of critical thinking or engagement with your surroundings? Does that sound good? Think we can do that? Yes? Mm, wonderful. Nah. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. All right. Lord Wiley Divorce. Okay. Good old Neil. <laughs> Skip the intro sequence. This is you. <laughs> They're objectively ranked two nine thousand three hundred twenty eight out of nine thousand three hundred. Why not ask for some friends of friendly list lives empty. Ah, oh, right. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Great. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You Come wouldn't on, mind then. taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. Oh. In this game, the baby crawls left no. towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation uh, and tedium of endlessly no. confronting the demands of family life. The baby. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Oh, Be right. sure to keep notes on your experience. I don't know if I can play four hours of this. As soon as I saw the baby in the flames, I thought this is not going to end well. Also, I feel like I've seen this as an ending before. And, yeah, it'd be of the not good ending. I don't know how many endings there are to this game and how much you can change it and fuck it up. But this is definitely one of those ways. And the sound is really quite distressing. So what I might do... Stop pressing it mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go back. Like the baby I don't really like that. I don't like it. It's not where I thought it was gonna go. I've not actually seen this ending before when I played ten years ago. This is dark and I don't like it. I don't like that sound either. You heartless bastard. <laughs> Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? 
Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <coughs> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Oh, God, what is it going to be? <laughs> Sorry. I had to stop pressing that button. Oh, okay, it's Minecraft. Well, Stanley, is this any better? <laughs> At last, the one thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be enough? Well, I'll say this. I'm done making things for you. From now on, I will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. <laughs> this will go here. No, here. And then... Let's see, what does it need? I, uh, yes, of course. And just to finish it all off, yes. <laughs> It's complete. I made this, Stanley. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Ah, but you've only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please, step inside and make yourself comfortable. This game really doesn't need me commenting on it, if I'm honest, but here we are. Can I go in? Will I let me in? There we go. Isn't it grand? Isn't it perfect? It's very it could only be else. better if... Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. Diamond everything. Yes, yes, yes. Come along, Stanley. We have to go mining. Oh. <laughs> yes, Minecraft. Like I haven't already played countless enough hours of this. Now I guess playing another game. Oh my. It looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? No. Okay, coal. Charcoal gives me light. Coal. No. We're going to get attacked by creepers, aren't we? Just know it. Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all. One out of five. Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. Okay, new game. <laughs> it's too open-ended. Yeah, I think I've made the uh, narrator have a breakdown. <laughs> oh, yes! Portal. I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You, trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's inspired. I couldn't have done it any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. Let's go find out what the hell this is. I love Portal. I think this is built, the, the original game was built in the same engine as Portal. Not sure about the new version. Oh! It's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. Yeah. Your forte. Companion cube. Genius. Yes. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. <laughs> I really don't care much to see you stumble through any more of these games. Oh, and I highly doubt you're... Oh. Well, I, um, I interrupted. Hello? Oh. Well, I didn't mean to continue to perpetually fall. This has got a bit surreal, if I'm honest.
44. When I go back to cubicle 427, is that where we're going with this? Yes, of course it was. What's the betting that this is? Well, it was a modded version of Half Life. What's the betting that this is the original makeup of the game? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. That's all very sinister. I don't have any control over anything anymore. Is it going to start the game again? It is. <laughs> So that's one very specific ending for a very specific set of choices. I do not know how many endings there are, genuinely. I think you can also choose not to leave the cubicle. Um, I don't know how that would go. Oh, this is a different layout altogether. Oh, the map's different. This has thrown me. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Still gonna go to the one on the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yes. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. On then. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Yep, that's exactly what I did. I didn't take this lift. <laughs> to somewhere else. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now, in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh, from here, it's, um, left. No. No, it's not allowing me to go. Oh, no. No, it's to the right, my mistake. You bastard. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? <laughs> now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yeah, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. That's not that, is it? No, 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 this isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about, rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay. okay. From the top. I won't. 
Ah, oh, yeah, this isn't all there. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Let's see where we're going this time. When Stanley... Wait. Uh, wait. What? No, I... No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over. Completely fresh. Everything should be... Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere or... Uh, hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay then, it's an adventure. Come Stanley, let's find the story. Okay. Inner guilt, everyone knows what you did. They're just holding back, back to let you torture yourself. Ah, oh, that's a bit dark. I'll say it, this is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just, do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? <laughs> we'll go again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ah. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. Okay, that's trippy. Oh, I don't like this. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Nope. Now this... Well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so good job. Oh, no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. Here we go again. <laughs> Stanley Parable Adventure. All right, I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Okay. 
Okay, so that room still has no doors. <laughs> Let's follow the adventure line. This would be a nightmare for you to play because like there's plenty like to miss, so many choices to make. It just frustrates me. You see, that I'm sure I'll never the see. line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Nope. Here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. <laughs> the music, go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. That is fascinating. Uh. Wait, what? We're back at the office? No, no, no. Line... You do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Oh, we're back here again. Oh, no, 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 not again. Line, how could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... Oh, I can't take this anymore. To hell with it. Restart. <laughs> The adventure line is back. <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> Thought it would have ended by now. This is either quite interesting and weird and fun, or very, you know what, very Stanley, boring for you. I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh. This all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in... Well, I don't know. How about this direction? Okay. Through this door. Now, yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. Uh, what do you want our story to be? Trippy. Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley... I'm ready for oh. it. Trippy. Trippy. Oh no, the not you again. Line again. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it. And we should be fine. <laughs> it just disappears up through the ceiling. I just love how weird it all is. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. 
From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere, the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that, in turn, means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Hold up, what's this? Oh. Huh. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game what, eight, eight times? <laughs> that's really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really... No, it can't be. I, d I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the timer stopped. Oh. Does that mean, um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. <sighs> I guess now we just wait, you know. I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story, wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey, though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination, so I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime... Oh, okay. <laughs> This is all getting a bit confusing. But the narrator is having a, a crisis. Everything is uh, just restarting. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might... Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. In the broom no closet. reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Yep. Standing around doing nothing? <laughs> Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm... I'm genuinely confused. I love the idea of just... so many different endings. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. 
but it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Yeah, just gonna keep ignoring. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> That's really me. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. <laughs> no, just stay here. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no oh, reason at all. Loop. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Ah. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! 
he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. <laughs> I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay. There we go. Well, that was another ending.
Uh, I've just looked it up. <laughs> There's a fair few, but you've seen a few. It's been really weird, and I know this video is long, but I just thought I'd share this oddity of gaming with you, not normally like the usual stuff I'd show you. Uh, and it's probably a long one and an odd one, but I thought now is that time where to can show off something a bit different. So I um, hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for joining me, and I will see you in the next one.